rise to power uh, the rise of the tuglas uh, into power if you see to the power if you see uh, ghazi malik he was a turkish noble who rose through the ranks of the delhi uh, dalit sultanate under khaljis he founded the tuglak dynasty so ghazi malik when he assumed the throne he took the title of giyazuddin uh, tuglak in 1320 and he assumed power So, and he started the Tughlaq dynasty. Good evening, students. Welcome back to Pluto Science. Right, today is our sixty-fourth day. All right, and today we are going to study about the Delhi Sultanate. so uh, in the medieval period i am covering only two topics uh, because you know the number of questions that are being asked from the medieval india they have been uh, reduced in the if you see the previous trends like from 6 7 years uh, since 6 7 years the questions have been reduced somewhat so in between here and there they are asking still so uh, comparatively if you see the number of questions are being reduced so because of that reason mostly i am focusing on the important topics that too on the chronology <coughs> or we can see the i am going forward with the chronology of the rulers and briefly wherever the important rulers are there um i am focusing little bit somewhat little bit more uh, we are going to study little bit more about them in some detail so so this is uh, about the i mean this is a brief introduction so delhi sultanate in medieval uh, medieval period so especially if we see two major dynasties we see or we can say divide we can divide uh, it into major two major periods one period is uh, the rule of uh, rule during the delhi sultanate period and the next is mughal dynasty so mughals are very very important so after that uh, we enter into the modern age where we will see the arrival of the britishers so uh, in the medieval india there are other kingdoms like the uh, <coughs> vijayanagara empire empire the kakpias the yadavas so uh, bahmani kingdom etc uh, even uh, certain regional kingdoms like bengal uh, in gujarat etc so these uh, dynasties are there especially the regionally dominant dynasties but i am go- not going to cover them uh, you from your side try to cover them uh, try to know some details about these uh, regional dyna- dynasties especially uh, two are very very important one is uh, vijayanagara empire vijayanagara empire second one is bahmani kingdom bahmani kingdom or if you are interested you can also study about the uh, uh, the rajput kingdoms rajput kingdoms so rajputs also play a very very important role during the medieval medieval period period uh, next still if you, if you want to uh, cover further you can also study the marathas right see the rise and fall of marathas so st- some part you will be covering just before the medieval i mean modern period also especially during the rule of aurangzeb still if you want you can study the maratha kingdom or maratha empire also right so these are some of the important topics you try to cover from your side right so uh, now today we are going to study about the delhi sultanate so briefly they have ruled i mean the delhi sultanate existed the period between 1206 to 1526 so in total they have ruled for approximately 320 years so during that period we will see five dynasties ruling the delhi sultanate so those dynasties are mamluk dynasty it is also known as the slave dynasty slave dynasty this name came because most of the rulers who uh, ruled or who became kings in this dynasty are mostly 
बिफोर बिकमिंग किंग्स दे वर स्लेव्स राइट सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस रीजन इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज स्लेव डायनासी और मामलुक मामलुक मीन्स ओल्ड सो ओल्ड दैट इज ऑल्सो मीन्स डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली पर्सन ओल्ड बाय अनदर पर्सन सो इट कम्स टू स्लेव ओनली राइट so this started we can say establishment of delhi sultanate started with the incursion of mamad ghori or mohammad he is also known as mohammad of ghor uh, popularly we call him as mohammad ghori mohammad ghori so you know very well you study very uh, very i mean you might have studied uh, two names you mostly hear uh, because of the uh, sorry the reason for uh, becoming or incoming of the we can say <coughs> uh, islamic kingdom into india those two rulers are first one is mohammad ghazni or mohammad of ghazin uh, <coughs> ghaznavid also it i mean he is being called uh, popularly we call him as mohammad ghazni right so he is also alternatively known as mohammad of ghaznavid so it is an empire even the gor empire or ghaznavid so there were empires in the present day afghanistan iran afghanistan region so because i mean they want to spread and they want to exploit they heard stories about india that india is very rich and a lot of resources are there so uh, mohammad ghazni's entire invasions were to not to rule india but he wanted to just exploit whatever the resources uh, were there he just came uh, to exploit the resources right so that was his uh, that was the purpose of his invasions into india so some people say he has almost invaded india 17 times i mean incurred into india 17 times all the times the purpose is only one to loot the resources especially they have targeted temples which were holding resources like gold etc so the motive of those attacks was to extra extract those resources and uh, so because uh, the image worship is not allowed in uh, uh, islam so they also try to destroy the temples the worshiping places that are there in india so however the motive of mohammad of ghor or mohammad ghori was different he wanted to have a kingdom in india right unlike the mohammad of ghazni he wanted to have a kingdom in india so we can say the establishment of uh, the delhi sultanate has started by mohammad ghazni however we can say the confederacy or we can say indian defenses especially at the western borders they have been weakened by the invasions or attacks by mohammad of ghazni uh, when the mohammad ghori's time came it kind of became easy for him to uh, come through the defenses of india so in this region especially the rajputs were dominating uh, in the region of rajputana so many rajput kingdoms were there reasons vary i mean we will also study uh, if you seek the uh, if you are in if you uh, uh, read in the optional of history so there are various, various uh, reasons for uh, we can say Uh, success of mohammad ghori uh, into india one of the reasons is there is no uh, you can say unity among the rajput kingdoms so because of this reason also uh, i mean indian borders have been breached right so everything is started with the gurids uh, in gurid dynasties invasions into south asia right so they used to rule the uh, over the parts of present day afghanistan iran and pakistan right so all has started with the invasion of good so uh, rajput Conf- confederacy that is led by prithiva prithviraj chauhan um, at the battle of second battle of tarrain so the mohammad mohammad ghazni was able to defeat uh, the confederacy rajput confederacy only a few rajputs have joined him prithviraj chauhan so he was defeated in the second battle of tarain there is first battle of tarain also so in that battle prithviraj chauhan he was able to defeat mohammad ghazni 
so right so when he came a uh, second time he came he took uh, we can say severe measures like uh, he declared the war as a holy war <coughs> and uh, so uh, he uh, motivated soldiers etc and because of this reason i mean at the same time we will also see weakness in the indian defenses also so because of this reason the borders of india have been breached and uh, delhi sultanate i mean it laid the foundation for delhi sultanate so uh, the delhi sultanate the period of 320 years in that we will see the rule of five dynasties those dynasties are mamluk or slave dynasty khalji dynasty tughlaq dynasty sayyid dynasty and lodi dynasty so in that the most important dynasty we can say most popular or uh, we can say important dynasty is tughlaq dynasty we will see uh, one or two important rulers here apart from that khalji dynasty is also uh, famous so the expansion into other parts of india has started in the khalji dynasty uh, by uh, tughlaq dynasty further conquest has been further expanded and most almost all of the indian subcontinent has come under the we can say under the control of the delhi sultanate so after that you will see a decline in the territorial we can say the uh, the territories of the delhi uh, delhi sultanate have declined during the sayyid dynasty and they have further declined to lodi dynasty so by the time of ruling of uh, lodi dynasty again the territories of delhi sultanate have confined to only nearby parts of capital delhi so again the we can say uh, there is a uh, sharp decline in the territorial expansion of the delhi sultanate right so this is a brief introduction about the delhi sultanate so apart from that we will see cultural contribution uh, <coughs> uh, cultural contribution or in the sphere of art and architecture also we will see uh, emergence of a peculiar we can say culture that is composite culture composite culture uh, you may ex expect a question in the mains about a about the co composite culture what is meant by composite culture so it emerged with the combination of blending or we can say blend of islamic islamic and indian traditions so with the blend of islam islamic and indian traditions composite culture has emerged so best examples are the hindustani music hindustani music so it is we can say it is one of the best examples of composite culture another examples we will see in the architecture also architecture also in many monuments we will see the blend of indian style of architecture and the persian style of architecture so uh, there are n number of examples uh uh that you can give in the composite culture so be aware of this uh, topic and uh we will discuss uh in the mains when we discuss the mains topics we will discuss we will discuss about the emergence of composite culture during the medieval period especially during the delhi sultanate period right so new forms of architecture art and literature have been uh introduced by the we can say uh, incoming of islamic rule uh, in india so we will see uh, progress in these all these areas also apart from that uh, this period is also uh, uh, known for political instability and warfare so during this pe period we will see continuous warfare and political instability also right so the empire during this period the empire was constant constantly under the threat of uh, foreign invaders so external invaders so a, a series of uh, external invasions have also come uh, the mongols they have also increasingly started coming and knocking the western border so sometimes they are successful in coming uh, deep into india so some mongol Uh, invaders they reached even delhi also and uh, after that we will also see the incoming of the mughals or uh, we can say the descendants some are descendants of timurids so babar was able to again defeat the last uh, dynasty rulers the 
Ludi dynasty rulers and he established the Mughal empire in India so during this period continuously the uh, external invaders they were knocking the doors of India right so in this way the Delhi Sultanate eventually came to end in 1526 when uh, it was defeated by Mughal empire uh, that is Babar Babar was responsible for this so this is a brief introduction now we will see about each and every dynasty in the Delhi Sultanate so in the image you can see the territorial expansion of the uh, slave dynasty right so the, these are the territories and uh, that were under the control of the slave dynasty so uh, the term mamluk comes from the arabic word mamluk or which also means owned so indirectly it is uh, suggesting it is slave only slave so it, because of that reason uh, most of the kings who came in this dynasty they were before they were uh, before that they were slaves of the kings so because of that reason it is, this dynasty is also known as slave dynasty so time period they have ruled between 2000 sorry 1206 to 1290 so approximately they have ruled for a period of uh, nearly 80 years so founding of the dynasty Kutubuddin Aywak so he was one of the slave of the uh, uh, Guru Sultan Muhammad Ghori. So uh, when India he invaded India, he left the territory. Uh, he left Kudubuddin Aybak as the caretaker, as the governor of the territories that are conquered by him in India. So once uh, Muhammad Ghori was dead in 12, uh, 1206, Kutubu, Kutubuddin Aybak declared independence and uh, he declared himself as the Sult sultan of delhi so in this way the uh, slave dynasty has been started right so kutubuddin aibak ruled for four years so after that <coughs> i mean his major contributions are he is uh, known for building he is known for building kuwatul islam mosque and he also laid the foundation for kutub, kutub minar so both are in delhi so this is his greatest contribution in the architecture. So after uh, Kutubuddin Aybak came the one of the important rulers, Altamash. So he ruled between 1211 to 1236. He is considered as the one of the greatest ruler, ruler, uh, rulers of the slave dynasty. Uh, one of the important thing happened during his time is he repelled the incoming Mongol invasions. Right. So Mongol, you know, it is uh, Mongols at that time were ra uh, ravaging. They were a ravaging force. They took war uh, for a, we can say, sport. And they were increasingly became powerful and invading the neighboring areas. So uh, they also led invasions into India. So Altmash was successful in repelling the attacks from the Mongols and uh, saving the borders of India. All right. He also success. He was also successful in establishing a strong centralized administration in India. Next ruler uh, ruler is Razia Sultana. Uh, so we can say she is the only first and only women ruler in the entire we can say Delhi Sultanate. If you see uh, during the Mughal period also briefly we will see the dominance of Nur Jahan. But Nur Jahan never became the queen. Uh, he was, uh, I mean, she was ruling from the shadow of the Jahangir only. Uh, she was making the entire, I mean, almost all the important decisions. However, she did not lead, she did not directly assume the throne. However, Razia Sultana uh, was a peculiar case, very, very peculiar course, case. She directly assumed the throne, right? So she was the first and only woman to rule the delhi sultanate all right so however <coughs> her rule was very short-lived due to uh, conservative nobles so the nobles who were there they never accepted the rule of razia sultana and uh, did not accept her as a ruler so because of that rule uh, that reason she was uh, murdered and she was i mean so because of that she was murdered and her rule was ended 
so after that came uh, we can say the strongest ruler in the slave dynasty that is giyazuddin balbal so he was one of the nobles before uh, he becoming he was be he became a sultan so there was a group of nobles that is known as chihalgani chihalgani or it is also known as the uh, group of 40 group of 40 so mostly 40 around inner around 40 nobles used to be there in the group so because of the uh, you know nobles are the uh, basis of feudalism so each of this noble they will have they are assigned a land area so they are uh, everything for that land area so based on the size of the land they have to maintain certain army and they have the power power to collect the taxes in that territory so they have to maintain certain army and whenever the emperor or sultan calls for the i mean army they have to assemble the army but however practically instead of the sultan himself having the army control over the army the nobles had the control over the army so when they formed as a group they became all powerful and the sultan kind of became puppet so before Giyazuddin Balban he was uh, coming into force he was a noble in the uh, in the group of 40 so he knew all the tactics that are played by this uh, that I mean those are played by this particular group so when he came to power first thing he did is he weakened this group Chihalgani so by I mean he introduced various methods that are practic generally that are there in uh, we can say uh, the <laughs> central asian practices like sizda and paibosa generally uh, which show or re uh, reincorporate the authority of the sultan like uh, kissing the hand of the sultan uh, uh, making a uh, we can say uh, namaskar uh, to the uh, to the sultan so all these measures have been brought to, i mean uh, brought in by the uh, giyazuddin balban so in a way he kind of became again uh, gathered the strength to be a to be a true leader true and strong military leader this thing he achieved by introducing various methods like sizda and paibosa uh, and also uh, by uh, appointing spies and creating internal conflicts between the uh, group of 40 so they ha he has created internal conflicts uh, among them and uh, he removed most of the nobles also so because of all these reasons this group of 40 has been controlled and uh, the balban was able to assert his authority properly so he is also known for his strong military leadership and apart from that he also successfully defended the delhi sultanate from the attacks of the mongols so after uh, Balban, Giyazuddin Balban, Kaikbad, he came to power. So he ruled between 1987 to 1990. So only for a brief period of three years, he ruled. So, <coughs> right. So during this period, uh, the uh, his rule was marked by internal conflicts and a decline in central authority. So ultimately, this led to the downfall of the slave dynasty. Right. So this is about the slave dynasty. Next came the Khalji dynasty. So <coughs> Khalji dynasty, you will see little bit more expansion of the uh, territories uh, during the rule of the uh, Khalji dynasty. Right. So the rule, uh, uh, you you will see the rule from 1290 to 1320. So the Khalji dynasty. It ruled between 12, uh, 1290 to 1320. It was the second dynasty. So they have ruled for a period of 30 years. So uh, rise of the Khaljis, if you see, Khaljis were a Turkic Afghanistan dynasty. So there are both features, the Turkish features, uh, I mean say Turkish grassroots and uh, Afghan roots also there for these rulers, right? So the founder of the dynasty was Jalaluddin Firuz Khalji. He was a military commander under the slave dynasty. So he assassinated the last uh, slave dynasty ruler Kaikubad. So 
Kaikubad and he established the Khalji dynasty. So Khalji dynasty, it was known for the aggressive military campaigns and they significantly expanded Delhi Sultanate's territory during their rule. So most important ruler in the Khalji dynasty is the Alauddin Khalji. So he ruled between 1296 to 1316, right? So he is the most prominent ruler in the Khalji dynasty. So most of his role, we will see the expansion of the territorial uh, territory of the Delhi Sultanate. So mostly he was engaged during his entire, we can say, ruling period. He was waging wars, right? So he conquered uh, expeditions. He led expeditions to into India. So he's uh, one of his famous uh, slaves are uh, was there. He led the expedition in South India. Try to know more about the expedition of uh, the Alauddin Khalji slave, and he himself, Alauddin Khalji himself, he conquered regions like Malwa, Gujarat, and Tantambur. So mostly he concentrated his attacks in the Rajputana, Rajputana or Rajput kingdoms. So as he was waging wars in the Rajputana, his slave, favorite slave, he invaded, he led expeditions into India. And he defeated series of South Indian kingdoms like Kakadiyas, Yadavas, etc. So try to know more about that invasion also. Apart from that, Alaujin Khalji's uh, rule also is known for certain reforms including administrative and the military reforms. So he introduced a system of price control because uh, he was continuously waging war. So because of the, uh, that reason, he has to maintain a huge army huge standing army so for purchasing uh, groceries or goods for the army uh, became very difficult and uh, price rise was a major problem so uh, to overcome that he uh, we can say he started special markets special markets where the prices will be low, uh, low so where that at that place the soldiers can go and uh, we can say uh, i mean purchase their groceries so he introduced a system of price control in this way he created special markets and that there the military personnel or the soldiers can go and purchase the goods at subsidized prices and he is known for uh, tax reforms also he introduced a new method of taxation system he appointed new tax collecting collecting officers those officers are known as amils right so the tax rate also kind of became very high during the rule of the alauddin khalji so apart from that he also instituted a strong standing army because he was waging continuous wars right however if you see the social and the religious policies of alauddin khalji so the, his policies are somewhat controversial he imposed tax on the non muslims that tax is uh, popularly known as jizya tax so it is english it is known as poll tax so that's a tax is jizya jizya tax right so in this way if you see uh, he is not that um, uh, he is not very well known for religious tolerance so kind of his uh, measures were somewhat discriminatory right all right so the dynasty has ended because of the conflicts and assassinations so Alauddin himself was murdered in 1316. Uh, this uh, triggered a period of instability and uh, subsequently the dynasty was ended by uh, Tughlaq dynasty. Right. So this is about the Khalji dynasty. Next uh, important dynasty we will say the entire in the entire Delhi Sultanate period this dynasty is very very important Tughlaq dynasty. So you can see the expansion of the territories during the Tughlaq dynasty. Right. So the period is between 1321 to 1398. So the Tughlaq dynasty uh, rise to power, uh, the rise of the Tughlaqs uh, into power, if you see, to the power, if you see, uh, Ghazi Malik, he was a Turkish noble who rose through the ranks of the Delhi, uh, Delhi Sultanate under Khaljis, he founded the Tughlaq dynasty. So Khazi Malik, 
when he assumed the throne he took the title of giyazuddin uh, tughlaq in 1320 and he assumed power so and he started the tughlaq dynasty right so giyazuddin tughlaq he ruled between 1320 and 1325 for a period of 5 years so though his period is a shorter one he is known for his religious tolerance he recognized the fact that so uh, hinduism is a, hinduism is a dominant religion in india most uh, i mean maximum number of people are following hinduism so he thought that imposing strict imposition of the islamic rules will not work so he allowed indians to practice their we can say way of life uh, he allowed people to celebrate festivals india hindu festivals etc so his period is known for uh, religious tolerance and that is continued by his successors also i mean immediate successor uh, mohammed bin tughlaq however after mohammed bin tughlaq uh, we will see again uh, we will see a briefly uh, reactionary period that is uh, during the period of firush firush firoz tughlaq right so he established uh, giyazuddin tughlaq he established a new capital city uh, just outskirts of the delhi only at tughlaqabad so it is south it is at the, at the southern i mean southern part or southern direction of delhi so tughlaqabad even now also you can see the remnants of uh, the capital capital of tughlaq tughlaqabad right the important ruler in the i mean the tughlaq dynasty is mohammed bin tughlaq so he is uh, he ruled for over 26 years from 1325 to 1356 so people believe that the historians believe that he was a visionary uh, he was a visionary leader he wanted to experiment he want to uh, i mean uh, do experiments with the new things he has tried and uh, tried many many things but uh, unfortunately all those measures taken by him did not work so because of this reason he is uh, some uh, historians also criticize him uh, as a uh, we can say incompetent ruler or his period is known for we can say uh, he became very unpopular to say it, uh, so to say so because of the failures of the uh, actions taken by him however if you see the actions themselves they are very visionary and they are i mean very futuristic also so they were needed at that time but however due to improper implementation and also uh, because of the non cooperation from his nobles those measures almost all the measures have been unsuccessful so because of that reason his period is also known as a uh, period of unsuccess unsuccessful reforms and uh, mohammed bin tughlaq himself was blamed for all those failed reforms so some of the reforms he has taken some five to six reforms so some of them we will see uh, taxation reforms so he introduced a new tax on agriculture uh to i mean to increase the income of the country and he wanted to spend that income for the development of agriculture only so but however this has tax has seen a, see, seen as an excessive because already the farmers were playing uh, paying land revenue land tax so this has seen uh, as an excessive measure only this tax has been introduced in the we can say uh, the fertile regions like ganga ganga yamuna plains so in certain regions only specific regions only this tax has been introduced in the fertile regions like ganga yamuna uh, plains still the uh, the tax has been criticized as an excessive and it became a it caused widespread rebellion among the peasants so it is a failure so unfortunately at the same time also the crops failed crops failed so the farmers were unable to pay this agricultural rule so uh, mohammed bin tughlaq realized this uh, problem that crops have failed and far- farmers are struggling to pay the taxes so after the a brief period of rebellion he introduced uh, support for the pro- uh, support for the farmers so he started the concept of takkavi loans takkavi loans that is uh, loans temporary loans loans for the farmers to overcome the drought period right 
so still we are following this concept whenever the rains fail and the subsequently the crops fail the government uh, the present also we will give temporary or uh, we can say uh, drought relief loans to the farmers those loans are known as takkavi loan right so another reform or measure taken by him is shifting of the capital so he wanted to shift the capital from the delhi to devagiri in south india right so the reasons behind this measure is one thing is the mongols were frequently invading delhi so kind of delhi is threat threatened delhi means the capital the capital is threatened this is one thing and also uh, climato climatologically delhi is not suitable because in the winters you will see lot of uh, we can say severe cold and in the summer period you will see the uh, lot of uh, we can say uh, high temperature you will uh, see so because of this reason two major reasons he has shifted and also if you see the territorial expansion also so the uh, uh, the empire has expanded by leaps and bounds so if you see the capital uh, sorry this is not the capital <coughs> right so capital is uh, confined to only one particular uh, capital is too distant from all these regions so he wanted to i mean when the capital is here it becomes uh, difficult for the sult sultan to uh, uh, control the long distance region so for that matter what he tried is he uh, i mean he tried to shift the capital from delhi to daulatabad or devagiri so he thought that if he uh, if the capital is here he can control all the regions equally because it is somewhat uh, to the at the center part of the country and one more thing is the capital will be saved from the mongol invasions so these uh, because of these reasons he planned shifting of the capital however uh, the nobles who were placed here in delhi and who had comforts there they uh, resisted moving uh, moving or shifting to devagiri only part of the administrative machinery moved so because of that reason also this measure failed so because of the lack of support etc and other reasons people who came here they are also struggled to settle here so because of this reason it uh, resulted as a failure and again he moved back the capital from daulatabad to daulatabad back to delhi so this measure is also a failure right another important failure is token currency so uh, because of the we can say increasing increasing expenditure increasing we can say prices of the gold and silver so there was at the time there was not sufficient gold and silver to mint coins so what he did is he introduced token currency made up of copper so uh, the actual value of uh, at that time the practice was so the value of the currency was the value of metal also right so what he did is the face value he kept as the uh, value of the gold or silver coin but actual value of the metal was not the same so you know very well copper is not that much value when com valued when compared to gold or silver so this currency is known as token currency so present day all the currency that is there in the practice is token currency only we will see no actual i mean <coughs> the value of the metal is not at all equal to the value of the currency so uh, even now we are using paper currency so the value of the paper is paltry if you see uh, the prices or we can say the denomination mentioned on the notes like 10 rupees 5 rupees 100 rupees 500 rupees even we had uh, 2000 rupee notes 10000 rupee notes also we had so whatever the currency now uh, nowadays is there it is a token currency only but uh, it was a good idea by the uh, by uh, mohammed bin tughlaq but it failed due to uh, lack of trust by the people so trust issues were there and because of the we can say counterfeiting also counterfeiting also so people were uh, increasingly started minting minting the copper currency there was no control 
so the forgery was there counterfeiting was there so because of this reason this experiment has failed right so uh, so other uh, i mean experiments also also there like khorasan expedition khorasan uh, expedition etc so that was also a failure so uh, if you take uh, your i mean when you study uh, history as an optional you will study in detail about the expeditions or expeditions of mamar bin glak so from your side also you try to know more about the uh, expedition or we can say the experiments of mamar bin tughlaq so after that you will see the rule of firuz shah tughlaq he ruled between 1351 to 1388 so his period his period is known for somewhat stability political stability because firuz shah tughlaq unlike mohammed bin tughlaq uh, he was a religious person he accepted the ulama's or instructions given by ulama's and uh, his period kind of provided a uh, stable polity but uh, in, fa- in fact uh, during his period most of the territories have been lost so delhi again become a uh, small we can say territorial expansion has considerably de- declined uh, the uh, regional uh, rulers they have declared independence delhi sultanate has lost most of its territory so the uh, kingdom has confined to uh, in and around the regions of delhi sultanate however for that part of territory he has provided a stable rule so during that period we will see a brief economic river recovery also uh, firuz shah tughlaq has undertook many public work departments and he has uh, initiated many uh, projects public work projects like building canals hospitals and educational institutions so these are the uh, uh, measures taken by uh, firuz shah tughlaq So, however also he is uh, he is not that much known for religious tolerance so basically he was uh, we can say uh, he was following the whatever the uh, recommendations or rules and regulations uh, given by ulama and uh, he was a religious follower of sharia law right so this is about firuz shah tughlaq he also built a new capital that is presently we know uh, presently known as Pirosha Kotla, right, right. So decline and fall of Fiji. There were rebellions, so harsh taxes and policies, and the failed reforms of Muhammad bin Tughlaq led to widespread rebellions, and uh, many provincial, we can say provinces, the rulers of provinces, they have declared independence, right. So also the invasions the tughlaqs have also faced the invasions external inclusions uh, sorry invasions uh, from timur lang a powerful uh, also we will also see the invasion of timur lang during this period right so this is the this is about the tughlaq dynasty next another small dynasties ruled delhi sultanate for a period of brief time so in that the sayyid dynasty is one so we can say it is the fourth dynasty in the series of dynasties of delhi sultanate so you will see the territory decline of territorial expansion of delhi sultanate by how much it has declined by that time so it was i mean the sayyid sayyid rulers ruled between 1414 to 1451 all right so it is a relatively short, short lived but significant dynasty so they were able to provide certain some sort of stability stability and we will also see some progress in the art and architecture arena right so unlike the other uh, we can say the uh, rulers or dynasties they ca- they claimed their descent from the prophet muhammad himself so that's why they earned it, the earn the title sayyid right other dynasties they have claimed the turkish or turkish uh, we can say origin right so kizir khan he was the former governor of multan under the timurids he capitalized or took advantage of the chaos after timur's invasion of delhi in 1318 and he captured delhi in 1414 and established his dynasty right 
So challenges, if we see uh, for their dynasty, weakened Sultanate. So Delhi Sultanate was significantly weakened uh, by the preceding Tughlaqs era, rebellions and invasions. Independent provinces, so many provinces have declared independence. External threat, external threats were there like uh, regional powers like Jaunpur, they were uh, becoming more and more powerful. Apart from that, you will also see the invasions of Mongols. If you see the rulers of the dynasty, Kizir Khan, he was the founder and the first ruler. After that, you will see Mubarak Shah, uh, Muhammad Shah and Allahuddin Aslam or Alam Shah. So, there was the, they were the rulers of uh, Sayyid dynasty. If we see the legacy and the contribution of Sayyid dynasty, they have provided some sort of stability and uh, they, have, they were the great patterns of culture. So, they patronized art, architecture and scholarship contributing to, contrib contributing to the cultural landscape of Delhi. Right. So they struggled. They struggled to. I mean, they struggled to maintain control against the regional powers. It they it marked a shift towards the rise of independent sultanates in India, right? So fall of dynasty. If you see, uh, the Lodi, Lodi, uh, Lodi dynasty overthrown them, and the dynasty Lodi dynasty came to power. So briefly, the Lodi dynasty, it is the last and uh, fifth and last dynasty to rule in Delhi Sultanate. So their rules uh, lasted between 1451 to 1526. So you will see the territory of Delhi Sultanate further, further declining during the period of Lodi dynasty. Right. So they ruled for approximately 75 years. So they were a Afghan dynasty, I mean, they have had their rules in the Afghanistan. So, they were originating from Punjab. Bahulul Khan Lo Lo Lodi, a powerful Afghan chief, he defeated last uh, Sayyid Sultan Alauddin Alam Shah and established the Lodi dynasty. Consolidation and expansion of empire took place. So, they suppressed uh, rebellions within the Sultanate. They brought some provincial governors back, uh, back under the control of the Delhi Sultanate. They extended the Sultan, uh, Sultanate's boundaries westward towards the Indus River. Right. So after Bahlul Khan's uh, Bahlul Khan Lodi's death in 18, uh, 1489, his son Sikandar Lodi he ascended the throne. Sikandar Lodi was a capable ruler. His contribution is he introduced administrative reforms to improve efficiency he focused on developing agriculture and infrastructure he encouraged trade and commerce so sikandar lodi he was the one of the prominent rulers the lodi dynasty so his dynasty also uh, the dynasty also the lodi dynasty also faced challenges because of the internal rivalries and the external threats so regional powers like bengal and the loop and the looming threat from the Mughals. So they were, I mean, these were the threats faced by the Lodi dynasty. So Ibrahim Lodi, he was the uh, last Lodi, I mean, I mean, Lodi dynasty ruler. So he succeeded Sikandar Lodi, I mean, he succeeded Sikandar Lodi. And uh, he was a harsh and unpopular ruler. So Ibrahim Lodi is blamed for, first he invited the Babar, to fight against the, uh, I mean, he was a, so Ibrahim Lodi was, we can say, uh, he had the fear of Rajputs, so he invited Babar to uh, fight against the Rajputs, right? So first Babar came and he uh, fought with the Rajputs. So once Rajputana was conquered, Rajputs rulers were defeated. He Babar himself uh, invaded the uh, uh, Ibrahim Lodi who actually in, I mean, invited Babar to invade India. So it worked kind of, it work, worked against him and he has to forego his empire. So he was a harsh and unpopular ruler and he is the reason behind Babar coming into India, right? So his policies also alienated nobles and they created discontent within the Sultanate. So in 1526, Babar invaded India and uh, he defeated Ibrahim Lodi 
at the first battle at Battle of Panipat uh, in 1526 and thereby he established the Mughal Empire in India. Right. So this is about the Lodi dynasty. So somewhat the Lodis also contributed to the art and architecture. So that we will see in the uh, when we study the art and architecture aspect. Right. Uh, this is about the Lodis and all the five dynasties in the Delhi Sultanate period. So now we will see some questions that are asked from this topic. First question it is asked in 2022. The question is with the reference to the Indian history consider the following statements. So the statements are the first Mongol invasion of India happened during the rule of Jalaluddin Khilji. So this is a wrong statement. Kalji dynasty is the second dynasty. The Mongol invasion happened during the slave dynasty only. So first Mongol invasion uh, came during the rule of Alt uh, Altamash. Altamash during the rule of Altamash, the first Mongol invasion has come. Uh, during a second statement is during the reign of Alauddin Khalji, one Mongol assault marched up to Delhi and besieged the city. Yes, this is a correct statement. This has happened. Next is Muhammad bin Tughlaq temporarily lost portions of northwest of his kingdom to Mongola. So this is an incorrect statement. Uh, the Mongols have attacked the western borders once again during the rule of Muhammad uh, bin Tughlaq. But he was successful in defeating and uh, I mean uh, he was successful in defeating the, the Mongol invasions. So in this way. Uh, he, I mean, he did not lose the territories. So this is a uh, incorrect statement. So the question is, which of the statements given above is are are correct? So option B only statement two is correct. Next question is, it is asked in 2020. Uh, the question is, consider the following statements. So apart from Delhi Sultanate, you should also have the knowledge of other medieval kingdoms like Vijayanagara Empire to answer this question so from your side you try to <coughs> study the leftover parts okay right the question is consider the following statements uh, the statement one is it was during the reign of Altamash that Chinggis Khan uh, reached the uh, Indus in pursuit of the fugitive uh, uh, Khwarezim prince right so this is a correct statement uh, actually what happened that time is Chinggis Khan was uh, I mean chasing his uh, fugitive prince uh, Khwarezim prince so actually this Khwarezim prince he asked shelter he asked uh, Iltamash to provide shelter and protection to him uh, being Iltamash being intelligent and uh, aware uh, I'm being aware of the power of Chinggis Khan Chinggis Khan he refused to provide shelter and asylum to uh, that Khwarezim prince. So this is a correct statement. So I mean uh, the I mean Chinggis Khan was uh, chasing this uh, uh, fugitive Khwarezim prince. So he was coming. I mean he was coming towards India. Uh, in fact, he asked asylum from Altamash, but Altamash, being intelligent, he refused to give asylum to this prince. So if Altamash has given asylum to this prince the Chinggis Khan might have invaded India. So you might have heard the stories about Chinggis Khan also. He, he was a very, very powerful Central Asian ruler, Mongolian ruler. So this statement is a correct one, right? Second statement is, it was during the reign of Muhammad bin Tughlaq that Taimur occupied Multan and crossed the Indus. So actually uh, Taimur captured, occupied Multan and uh, crossed the Indus river but it is after the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, almost 50 years, 50 to 60 years after the end, uh, rule, end of the rule of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So this statement is an incorrect statement. Next statement is, uh, it was during the reign of Devaraya II of Vijayanagara Empire uh, that Vasco da Gama reached the coast of Kerala. So this is also incorrect statement. Devaraya was ruling, I mean, uh, after Devara, rule of Devaraya after 40 to 50 years, Vasco da Gama came to the coast of Kerala. 
so this statement is also incorrect so correct statement is only statement 1 is correct option a is correct one right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, tomorrow we will study about the moguls right so see you tomorrow have a good day Thank you.